That's Bear Nang Bruv. Intergalactic Buffness Cuz. UFC is coming back to land and town for... <laughs> oh, it's already descended into chaos. The UFC is coming back to London for the second time this year and the second time in three freaking years. And we're all bloody excited about it, aren't we? Even Dana. After the last London event, he said, Tonight re-energised me and reminded me what it's like to do fights over in the UK. One reflection. That second part of that sentence is redundant. <laughs> of course it did. But it's suggestive that it's fucking awesome to do fights over in the UK. Oh, gotta get through this. We gotta make it, gotta make it, gotta make it through. Rear energized we all were. Now, I didn't get to go to the last event, and in true me fashion, there's a big old question mark over whether I'm gonna go to this one. We'll figure it out later. You'll have to follow me over on Instagram. But what we do know is that I will be doing multiple videos on the event because I'm just thrilled to have them here. Thrilled that it's in the UK. I'm thrilled that it's getting the sport of MMA in front of new fans. I'm thrilled that the UK talent is getting a world stage. And I'm thrilled that it'll probably inspire more people to get into the sport and hopefully start to make the sport more accessible in this country because it's fucking hard to find an MMA gym like within a reasonable distance to most people's houses because they're so sparse, sporadic. Which will, in turn, become the catalyst for more UK talent in the future. It's all connected, baby. For this first video, we're going to talk about some of the fights and some of the accompanying storylines that I am most excited about on the UFC London card that's coming up. I'm coming up. I want the world to know. I've forgotten my coffee. Flumpy, would you mind? Yeah, yeah, I was good, bro. You popping out tonight? We're kicking this off with the return of Darren Till. Oh wait, no wait. She didn't just say what I think she did, did she? Darren Till said nothing, you idiots. Darren Till's dead. He's locked in my basement. He's not dead, but he is fucking injured again. Can you believe it? I'm recording this literally a day after I told you all about my excitement, which went a little bit something like this. Till thrilled. Thrilled about Till. That's probably the name of his autobiography. This bitch right here. Now I don't want to take anything away from Darren Till, but we do tend to shoot our load all over UK fighters the second that they get some kind of traction or notoriety on the big stage because we just don't have the same depth of talent in our pools as you know the US, Brazil, even elsewhere in Europe it seems. And Darren Till got himself into the UFC, got himself a win in his debut with some beautiful elbows, some really nice elbows, but then lost his second fight, one, two in a row, against like pretty low level fighters. Then one against Cerrone and Thompson, back to back to back to back. It helps he's a scouser with a big mouth. Sorry, second part of that sentence was redundant. It helps that he's a scouser. The Americans just kind of lapped up his larger than life say it how it is character and we in the UK backed him for actually performing to a decent level under the bright lights. But then he was catapulted into title contention against Woodley, lost, and has been working to kind of reclaim his perch ever since. Lost to Masvidal, beat Gastelum, lost to Whitaker, lost to Brunson. And that brings us present. And he's been out since 
September 2021 because of a recurring knee injury. The same knee injury that he went into the Brunson fight with and the same knee injury that forced him to withdraw the first time he was booked to fight Hermanson. In an interview with Ariel Hawani, Till said, it's not as if I'm expecting to go into a fight without any injuries. We as fighters know that injuries occur during camp. All I'm asking for is to be able to start camp without any injuries. It doesn't seem like a big ask to me. Well, apparently it is. The guy who will still be standing in the octagon come July 23rd, Morning, a Darren Till shaped hole opposite him is Jack Hermanson. Looking to rebound from a split decision loss against Sean Strickland back in February. February? 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 Hey! I find it really hard to say February, so go with it. Jack, at least to me, has a name and a reputation that's potentially bigger than his actual record. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just mean that when I think of Jack Manson, I think of an absolute bloody legend. Like a fighter who must be fighting for the title soon. What a guy, you know? But actually, if you look at his record, he's alternated wins and losses for his last six fights. And maybe it's just his character and his persona that really kind of bumps him up in my estimations. For example, before he fights, he tends to, you know, run around screaming. He says it's to do with cultivating the right mindset and really bridging that gap between physicality and cognition. He says he's done a lot of experimentation when it comes to his pre-fight routines. You know, he's tried it calm and quiet, reflective. And the screaming is just what works for him. It matches his personality. It feels natural when he's about to go to war. It's a primal thing. And he's had a long time to figure this out because he started wrestling at nine. He is obsessed with this idea of the title, which is maybe why I think he should. he's so close to it because I hear him talking about it all the time. Maybe he will be after this fight. Everything he does in his life is designed specifically to form him into the best fighter in the world. Now, the replacement opponent doesn't quite have the UFC pull that's going to catapult him into that conversation, but it'll still be a fun fight. Chris Curtis is a gamer, man. He, he's been on an eight-fight win streak, not having lost since that night where he famously retired and then unretired same night in the PFL. When he steps into that octagon against Jack the Joker Hermanson, it will have been less than a month since we saw him get his last unanimous decision, but Chris likes to stay busy and it's not uncommon for him to take these last minute fights. He knows that the start of his pro career wasn't, you know, a completely upward trajectory and he knows exactly what he has to do to get in good with the UFC brass. He knows that now he's here, every moment counts. He said, at the end of the day, I'm a fighter. I love to fight. I'm still going to take the big fights going to take the big risk, going to try and take chances. My favourite phrase is, who dares wins? You can take a chance, you can fall spectacularly, or you can fucking succeed on the biggest stage, so why not? Kurtz's mindset before a fight is all about convincing himself that he is the main character and I'm here for it. He says it removes doubt and fear and this is just his story and y'all are all playing a role in it. And if he's right, then the Joker will be playing the role of defeated foe come July 23rd. He sees himself as a superhero and he always puts on a show right from the very first like media interviews through to the post-fight press conferences. So what we're missing in brashnosity from Till, who we are going to get back in pure entertainment value from the action man. While still not ranked, Curtis is knocking at the door. This is without a doubt the biggest fight of his career. If he can pull off the win, he will certainly have a number by his name come the following Monday, and the UFC will probably be knocking at his door with some bigger, better fights from here on out. 
Udez wins. E Udez wins. So, I mean, we may never get to see this Darren Till Jack and Manson matchup, but we will get to see a fun fight. Don't think we can complain about the replacement. Staying on the damn list, okay? I went on to talk about how beneficial it would be, will be, should have been to Darren's performance to be training with Hamza Chemaev. So now I suppose let's apply that same ethos and idea to another fighter's situation. Who is fucking fighting on the UFC London card, Darren? The Smash Bros also share a gym and the London card with Alexander Gustafsson, who's making his return to the light heavyweight division after being submitted by Vadum in the first round when he tried to make the move up to heavyweight. The All Stars crew will be out in force in our capital, ladies and gentlemen. And as we talked about in the UFC 273 video, that can make all the difference to the competing athletes. Having a few members of the same team training for the same event can create a competitive, motivating culture in the gym. The atmosphere improves, everyone's working towards the same goal, so there's no clashing. And hopefully all of this will help Alex get back in the win column for the first time since 2017. The next fight I am so ready for, mostly because I was fucking robbed of it previously, is the second outing to the Octagon for Mohamed Makayev. I'm not gonna spend that much time on Makayev because I have a whole video on him, which I will link for you on the end screen. But I can't talk about the fights I'm most excited for without mentioning this future champ called it. Due to his extensive amateur career, multiple IMMAF championship wins, cheeky smile, and Wigan slash Dagestan accent, there was a lot of buzz around Makayev ahead of his UFC debut at the last London event back in March. And you can't do much better than he did if you're looking to justify and amplify said hype than an under 60 second knockout of a loudmouthed, bigoted bully. I didn't get to see this. I mean, I did. I obviously watched it back, but I didn't get to see it live because the BT Sport coverage in the UK cut in just after. <laughs> they usually do come in like midway through the first fight, which is weird, but midway through was after, because it was so quick. But let me break it down for you. The sequence began <laughs> with a flying knee and ended in a guillotine choke of Cody Durden who has now coincidentally swallowed Humble Pie and actually started training with Makayev at American Top Team. But this isn't about him, nor is it about the fact that the phrase Humble Pie is based entirely on a lie and a misunderstanding. <laughs> so I won't talk about either of those things. Makayev is always looking to do something big, something impressive, something memorable, which is probably why we all fucking love him, right? In fact, he said afterwards that during that 60, under 60 second fight, he specifically transitioned to the choke to show more than one skill set, to not give the haters any room to doubt him. He said, I've done everything that was possible in about a minute. Makayev called for Tim Elliott after that win, but was eventually matched up with Charles Johnson. And then Alex Perez lost an opponent and I believe like the weekend before UFC London, he's due to fight. And Mikhaev was like, I'll take that fight as well. I'll do both. Watch me. Like having two fights in just over a week may be unheard of for like, UFC fighters, but for amateur fighters and lower level professional fighters, they do tend to fight more regularly. And Mikhaev especially used to keep a very busy schedule even since he turned pro, saying, I had six professional fights last year during COVID. It's hard, it's hard to make weight, it's hard to do that many fights, I still did it. And he's brimming with confidence at all times, gotta love him, 
slash be real jealous of him. So he's probably assuming he could fight Perez, not have a scratch on him and just roll into UFC London unscathed. But Perez got a new dance partner in Pantoja, so we'll never know. So though we won't be seeing that spectacle, we probably will be seeing a spectacle. He says the arena is gonna stand up again, same as last time, and I believe him. Charles Johnson is definitely a step up in skill for Makaev's next opponent. The former LFA champion can mix it up on the feet and hold his own if it goes to the ground. He's a finisher. He's on a four fight win streak and only one of those has gone the full distance. I don't think he can finish Makaev, but his only losses have come via decision. So the question is, can Makaev finish him? Or will it have to be memorable in another way? Perhaps he'll put on a striking masterclass. Perhaps he'll engage in an all out war. I don't know, I can't wait to see. I think that Makaev is just so good that he's not really gonna be tested until he rockets up those rankings. And maybe not even then, but probably. But every fight he takes gets him one step closer to that goal, that champ, that belt. And Makaev is smart and he is already starting to write that story. He says he believes it's possible in two fights in the UFC. The caliber of second opponent that they've offered him suggests that's not gonna happen. Like it's unlikely he's gonna go from some guy's UFC debut to like a top five. But he's definitely gonna increase his chances by, you know, winning, putting on a great performance and talking himself up and directly messaging current champ, Davison Figueredo, and telling him, listen, I'm coming for you. And he said he genuinely believes even now he could beat him. This guy has two arms, two legs, same as me. He trains the same as me. Jab, backhand, low kick, takedown. It's all about mentality. If you turn up on fight night with strong mentality like I had at London, I think that's what causes better performances. How strong you are mentally, that's what's gonna make you a champion. And it may be all about mentality, but he is certainly keeping his physical weapons strong and sharp and specifically moved his camp this time to American Top Team. There are a lot of gyms out there. Most of them will be training the same sorts of things. But ATT is a big gym. And more guys equals more experience for Makaev to soak up, higher level fighters to train with, learn from, prove himself against. And he also took a trip to Dagestan before he went to ATT. I believe for the first time since he left when he was 12. And he was certainly brushing up on that Dagestani wrestling with the team at Dynamo. ATT isn't known as a great wrestling gym with a few like standout exceptions. So Makaev's just looking to cover all bases. And he's already said he has his eyes on Jeff Molina next, who's just coming off a split decision win and a lot of publicity for basically being the complete polar opposite of Cody Durden, which would be a nice change of pace for Makaev. And of course, there are loads of other fights. This card is stacked. The wealth of talent is, although a lot of them are the same fighters that were fighting last time. We'll take it. We love it. Maybe that's the storyline. Maybe things will go different, better, worse, blah, 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 blah. Including Paddy, Molly will keep those American fans charmed by just going about their general business as scousers. Mark DeCasey coming back. Nikita Krylov is trying to avenge what happened to him at the last UFC London when he was submitted by Paul Craig. 2022 is just turning out to be a good year for us British fans and I'm gonna keep talking about it. Let me know in the comments which fight you're most excited for and who you think might prove to be a test for Mikhail. I will link that video on the end screen. Like, subscribe, come hang out with me on Instagram every single day. And I'll be back here next Monday for, you guessed it, another UFC London video focusing this time on the fight we all wanna see, Tom Aspinall, Chael Sonnen. I'll see you then.